I'm Greg Jarrett, and you were in the strategy room. The chairman of the House Select Committee probing former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's response to the Benghazi terror attacks signaled on Wednesday that the release of the final report could slip to just months before the 2016 presidential election if the Obama administration delays producing documents and witnesses. Here now to talk about it, radio talk show host Richard Fowler. Adam Goodman joins us, principal of the Victory Good Group. Good to see you both. Uh, Adam, if this happens uh, and it's released just before the election, doesn't that open up Republicans with the accusation that this is all just politically motivated to damage Clinton's electoral chances? That's a good question. And it's something I think Republicans have to be very careful about. But let's go back. I mean, this is an issue that began a couple of years ago, and Hillary was very defiant when she was brought before a congressional committee to try to explain her actions in Benghazi like nothing happened. And unfortunately for Hillary, uh, we now are looking at a presidential campaign where foreign policy uh, is becoming a very, very big issue. I think the Huffington Post said 41 percent rated as tops over the economy. And among Republicans, it's two to one over the economy. And that's probably her greatest credential and could be her greatest burden as she moves into this race and explaining that. So, yes, the timing has got to be handled uh, carefully, Greg, and if you're a Republican. But in terms of the American public, they want to know what happened and whether or not this is something they have to be concerned about as they look to electing the next uh, leader of the free world. You know, Adam, the final report could have been issued a long time ago had the Obama administration been forthcoming and not stonewalling over identifying the individuals involved and providing the appropriate documents that were requested, and Hillary Clinton herself uh, didn't even respond to the initial request about emails. So isn't ultimately she and President Obama to, to blame for any delay? I think so. To borrow the title from Al Gore's film, An Inconvenient Truth, I think this is very inconvenient uh, for Hillary at a time when she's trying to, to mount a national campaign built largely on the credentials of what she's done. And she's also has a, a, a heck of a job ahead of her yeah. to try to put, you might say, appropriate separation and distance where needed between herself and the president she served. I think right. that's a show everyone's waiting to see. Richard, I want your response to that. Uh, is Hillary Clinton in large part to blame for this as well as President Obama, the delay? Listen, I think this is more, uh, Greg, I gotta tell you, this is, you know, less of an inconvenient truth and more of a Salem witch trial. Uh, and the, the truth of the matter is this. Hillary's went down, she's testified, the White House has turned over thousands and thousands of pages of emails, and I think the American people, to be honest, are trying to turn the page on this. What we're trying to find is what candidate can not only deal with the foreign policy matters that are facing our country, but also finding a candidate that can deal with the kitchen table issues, building bridges right here at home, re-putting Americans back to work, rebuilding America. And and, that can, and that's what this election is going to be about. Now, yes, it is true that we're going to be talking about foreign policy in this election, but there's nobody more qualified in this field on foreign policy with more credentials than Hillary Rodham Clinton. I mean, you look at the Republican field, most of them are freshman senators, uh, and the ones that aren't freshman senators have absolutely, positively no political experience, no foreign policy experience. I mean, yeah. Scott Walker compared dealing with ISIS, dealing with the unions in his state. Come on, really? You know, Richard, um, it was interesting to hear Trey Gowdy respond to accusations of uh, political motivations in a delayed report. He said, well, that assumes the report is critical of Hillary Clinton. Uh, you buy that? Uh, no, not at all. And I think here's the thing. This select committee has been around for almost two years, and the fact that they would wait until nights before the 2016 election to drop this information is damning for the Republican Party. What they're trying to do is play politics here, and the American people are looking for solutions and not politics. We yeah. see this over and over and over again from them, and it's just a strategy that does not work. You know, Adam, uh, let's add it up here. In, in just the last several months, it, it has been not just the controversy surrounding Benghazi and Hillary Clinton's role in that as Secretary of State. But now, most recently, you have the email scandal, you have the foreign government's donations to the Clinton Foundation and allegations of a quid pro quo. At the end of the day, is there a cumulative effect to this that could really seriously damage the Clinton campaign? There's, that's a great question. There's no question, Craig, that this is cumulative, and it is starting to add up to a picture, which wasn't the picture that Hillary and her team wanted 
as their coming out story and their launch. It's not kind of gone, it's not kind of gone according to plan, clearly. Uh, and I think she has to answer these questions. And in part, I think the American public is enjoying, I have to use the wrong word, right? They're enjoying the show. They want to see how far Hillary will take it before she looks us in the eye and says what really happened or didn't. And to Richard's uh, uh, points from before, uh, at the end of the day, if there's nothing to hide about Benghazi, and that was really the nature of your last question, Greg, if there's nothing to hide, there's nothing to worry about. If there is, there could be plenty as we move into the final furlong of the race. And that is something I think Americans deserve to know. You know, Richard, Benghazi, the foreign government money, uh, the emails, um, as I mentioned just a moment ago, the cumulative effect of that, how does Hillary Clinton really battle that in the upcoming election? Listen, there's nothing the Republicans want more than to saddle Hillary with as much negative news as they can. So they're going to continue to pile on on Benghazi. They're going to talk about the foreign donations to um, her to the Clinton Foundation. They're going to pile on, pile on, pile on. And here's what they're missing when they do pile on, Greg, is they are forgetting that they also have to articulate a narrative. They People don't want to vote against somebody. They want to vote for a candidate. And Republicans have not articulated a clear narrative that can supersede Hillary Clinton's narrative. Hillary Clinton's not talking about them at all. All she's talking about is how you make ends meet, how working families can be uplifted, right. how we can make sure that people really get a chance to go back to work rebuilding America. And as long as she stays on that message and Republicans continue to do this hatchet act against her, they will lose in 2016. There has to be a real message. From no matter who the party is, no matter who the nominee is, you have to have a real message. Republicans are failing at creating a message miserably. All right. Richard Fowler, Adam Goodman, good to see you both. Thanks very Thanks, much. Sir. Check out foxnews.com for more on this story. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.